I'm Anne Louise from Minerva, and I'm here today to sew along with you this red carpet worthy Vogue 9328 in a Hollywood Glamour Minerva exclusive print. This pattern has a shocking six variations with different skirt lengths, sleeves, and then if that wasn't enough variety for you, they've included different cup sizes. The pattern recommends crepe de chine, rayon chalet, and lightweight broadcloth. Basically anything light and floaty that is fit for some kind of fairy princess. Today we are making view D, which is the most dramatic I would say, but who doesn't need a bit of drama in their life? We have a floor length A-line skirt with pockets, all my life pockets, so excited. We have some lovely gathered poof sleeves with a wide buttoned cuff. Our dress today is unlined and you can finish the neckline with either some bought bias binding or we are going to have a look at making our very own bias binding, which when our fabric is as patterned and with as many colours as ours is, might be a good idea. One of my favourite things about this dress is the gorgeous back detail. It really adds something special to an already gorgeous gown. Of course, everything we talk about today is available on Minerva right now and will be linked down below and will pop up throughout this video for your ease of shopping. First things first, we have to double check through our pattern instructions for any kind of hints and tips on how we sew our lovely dress. We will be using a 1.5cm seam allowance throughout and backstitching the beginning and ends of our stitch line. Without further ado, let's get stitching! Let's have a look at the fabulous materials we are using today. We are using this Minerva exclusive Kaleidoscope Palms Viscose Chalet. This lightweight and versatile fabric is going to look gorgeous in this unlined pattern, which will really give it an opportunity to shine. For the pockets, we are using this Minerva Core Range Combed Cotton Lawn. This fabric is hard wearing and stable, a perfect material for making the pockets that can hold anything. We will then need all our notions to complete our garment. We need 6 shank buttons, matching thread, a 14 inch zipper, some iron on interfacing, our bias binding and then finally our wonderfully woven Minerva Makers label. First things first, we are going to prep some of the pieces. We are adding the interfacing to the wrong side of the cuff piece and we're going to stay stitch all the necklines as the necklines are on some pretty unusual slants. Once the pieces are stabilised, we're adding the little dart to the centre front piece. This dart is super easy to put in. Just marking the dart marks with chalk and then matching up the marks with right sides together and pinning them in place. We then sew the darts, back stitching at the beginning and then working the stitch off at an angle and running the stitch off the end of the fabric a little to prevent any awkwardly placed dimples. Then to secure the darts, tie off the thread. After pressing the dart down towards the waistline, we get ready to attach the side front pieces right sides together, matching the notches. We repeat this step on the centre back and side pieces, so we are left with complete back and front pieces that we can join together. We press all centre front and centre back seams towards their closest side seam. The back seam is sewn and pressed, we join the front and back pieces right sides together at the shoulders, then press that seam open. We now bring both sides together by pinning and sewing that top back piece. Once that top section is sewn and pressed open, we now come and start work on our side seams. With right sides together, we match the notches and sew. This is our bodice so far. We have front and back pieces made up, attached together at the shoulders, side seams and that top back section. Now in a break from our scheduled programming to make a bit of bias binding. First things first, you want to be able to find the straight of grain. That is the threads that run parallel to the selvage edge. Then we find the cross grain that runs diagonally from the selvage edge. Honestly, I can feel my math teacher being proud of me for using these words. Anyway, we digress. Then at a 90 de degree angle, we find the bias grain. 
This is the nice stretchy part of the fabric that makes some really slinky slip dresses and some really flexible bias binding. Once our bias binding is cut out to our desired width, we can use a handy dandy bias binder maker which solves so many problems. With a pin we pull it through and then th this bit of kit does all the work for us, we just need to iron. Now we have our fabulous bias binding, we fold out one side and line that up with the edge of our neckline. Wrong side of the fabric to the right side of the bias binding. We then pin that in place around our neckline and our back detail. Now we sew our bias binding to our neckline, simply using the ironed crease as the seam allowance. I would say this is the pattern you try after making your first dress. It has some techniques that will be familiar, like the darts, but then it gives you an opportunity to branch out, trying things like pockets and buttonholes. Once that first edge is sewn, we flip the bias binding to the right side of our garment and sew that in place. Before you sew this down, you can press the bias binding out from the wrong side of the garment. This just helps the bias binding lay a little neater. Sometimes when I'm sewing, I like to have a little breather where I just do something super easy before I move on to something difficult. For example, we have the sleeves to put in next, but to warm myself up for it, I'm going to make up the skirt front. With right sides together, I match up the notches and attach skirt pieces 11 to skirt pieces 10. Viscose, or chalet, or visco chalet, is a lot older than you might think. It is actually one of the oldest man-made fabrics. It was first produced in 1883. This semi-synthetic fabric is often made from wood pulp or cotton. The pulp is typically made from trees such as beech, eucalyptus and pine. These are then dissolved into a pulp. This pulp is then washed, cleaned and bleached. This substance is then treated again to make fibres. The characteristics of this fabric make an affordable version of silk and that's how it was first marketed when it hit the market. It was used for things like petticoats and men's collars. This fabric is lightweight, breathable, drapeable, and just pure delightful. Now we can make a start on our sleeves. First things first, we are going to run a couple of lines of gathering stitches right at the top of the sleeve head, in between our marks. We then run some more gathering stitches along the bottom of our sleeve so we can get ready to gather our sleeve into our cuff. Once our gathering stitches are in place, we can sew our underarm seams, with the right sides together. We stop stitching at the mark near the bottom of the sleeve. This is to leave space, so we can unbutton our cuffs with ease. Once we have ironed that seam open, I'm going to do a quick and easy folded under seam finish. I never thought I'd be the type of person who has a favourite seam finish, but here we are. This is super easy to do and great if you're not sure on investing in an overlocker just yet. Literally, we fold the seam allowance underneath itself towards the seam and then pin it in place. Then I like to zigzag stitch down the seam allowance on each side. This makes it look super neat and is great for straight seams and seams that are split like ours. Once our seam is finished, we are just going to top stitch the split in the sleeve to make sure the seam allowance doesn't roll to the outside. We stitch up one side, across the top and down the other side. This will also help the sleeve to take some more wear and tear. We can now make a start on our cuffs. This is where I realised how slippery viscose is. Because I cut out these on double thickness, the bottom piece must have wiggled to freedom, so I am missing a corner. But not to worry, I have some of the cotton pocket fabric left that I can make into the wrong side of the cuff. Then with right sides together, we sew the three edges of the cuff, leaving the notched long side open to pop our sleeve into. Once that is sewn, we trim the seam allowance and clip the corners, flip it right way out and press. Now we can make a start on gathering the rather voluminous sleeve into the cuff. 
This is quite a process. I match up the edges of the cuff and sleeve on both sides. Then I normally tie off one end of the gathering threads by wrapping it round a pin to anchor it in place. Then I use the free side of the gathering stitch to fit all the fabric into our little cuff. Anchoring one side of the gathering threads really only works when there is a small amount to gather, like a sleeve head or sleeve cuff. When gathering something like a skirt, you will need both sides free, or you may snap a thread because of the tension. We then stitch that into place. I like to sew gather side up. This means I can keep checking that all the gathers are straight, where they should be and that nothing has got tucked in. We have some glorious examples of this dress tagged under the product on Minerva. Let's have a look at a couple. This is a wonderful example of pattern hacking by our maker So Little Time. This is a beautiful summer white dress that looks cool and stylish. Then we have Handmade by Chloe P with another fantastic make in a glorious Minerva exclusive print. Doesn't she look fabulous? Once both sleeves are sewn to their cuff, we can get ready to do some hand sewing, which just makes me so relaxed. First things first, we are bringing the gathered sleeve allowance into the cuff and covering it with the inside of the sleeve allowance, lining up that folded in edge with the stitch line of our cuff. You can stitch in the ditch this cuff if you fancy it, but for something a little easier to control, we can slip stitch the cuff seam allowance to the gathered sleeve. A slip stitch is a super duper easy peasy stitch that is invisible from the right side of your garment. All we are doing is sliding the needle into the lining layer, catching that very top folded under edge, then popping out, just to catch a tiny bit of the gathers and back into the lining again. This isn't the most sturdy of stitches, we wouldn't recommend it for holding together a pair of skinny jeans, but it is super handy for securing the lining of a garment. Once we have finished sewing our cuffs, we can prepare to sew in our fabulous shank buttons. I like to mark the buttonholes first. This makes getting the placement for the buttons a bit easier. We can use the guide on our pattern piece as reference, as the buttonhole function on our sewing machine will do a lot of the work for us. But it's best to make sure all the buttonholes are an even distance from the edge of the piece and an even distance from each other. We want three buttonholes on each cuff, all diagonally across from the short cuff side. Once we have the placement sorted, we can look at the width of the buttonholes. Measure the button including the height of the button head and use that for the width. I find the best tools for this are a hem gauge. This stays in place and I don't have to keep measurements in my head. And then an air erasable pen is great. I can basically doodle on the fabric and make all the lines I need without having to worry. Now I have thoroughly doodled on my fabric with great gusto, it's time to actually sew the buttonholes. Most machines will have a buttonhole attachment and their very own setting. Just make sure your stitch width is set to button, not a normal width. That will make for some slightly fragile buttonholes.
Once all six of your buttonholes are sewn, we need to open them up. For this you will need an unpicker, or your favourite unpicker, and a pin. Pop the pin in at one end of the buttonhole and work the unpicker towards the pin. The pin is there to stop you unpicking right through your freshly made buttonhole. Now our buttonholes are complete, marking the button placement is the easiest thing in the world. Simply flip the buttonhole side over the top of the button side, lining up the bottom cuff edge. This is a great opportunity to fit the cuff. During this step, stick your wrist into the cuff, tighten the cuff till it is comfortable, then with either an air erasable marker or chalk, mark through the buttonhole to the top side of the cuff underneath. You can use pins to mark the buttons, but that might result in light stabbing. Once we've marked our button placement, we sew them in place. I just want to take a quick break here at the halfway mark to talk about the wonderful community here at Minerva. We really want to encourage everyone to take up something crafty. At the top right of the post, you will be able to follow Minerva and keep up to date with offers, new releases, general fabric prettiness, and of course tutorials, sew alongs, and top pattern picks. Let us know what you would like to see next. Comment below. We love to hear what you think. Now our sleeves are looking fabulous, we just need to sew up the centre front of our bodice before we sew in our sleeves. With right sides together we bring the centre front together and sew straight down the edge there. Once we have ironed that centre front seam open, we can pop our sleeves in. With right sides together, we line up the underarm seam on the bodice and on the sleeve. We match notches and then pull the gathers to fit into our sleeve head. We then sew that into place in our arm's eye. We repeat this step on the other side of our bodice, unless you're going for a really high fashion couture look. And this is our progress so far, a brilliant bright bodice with some highly dramatic sleeves that look big enough to hide cats in them. I'm not sure why you would want to do some cat smuggling, but it's just a thought. We are now on the home straight with just our skirt and zip as the really big tasks left ahead of us. As we have already sewn pieces 10 and 11 together, we just need to sew pieces 12 and 13 together to create both sides of the back of our skirt, and then we can make a start on some pocket placement. With our pockets facing to the centre on the right side of our skirt and looking like big elephant ears, we sew from the top of the pocket to 5 eighths of an inch from the bottom. This leaves room for the pocket bag seam allowance. Repeat this step on all pocket pieces, attaching them to their skirt pieces, then pressing them out to the sides. We then start creating the pocket bags. 
With skirt pieces right sized together, line up the pocket pieces and sew from the side seam allowance to the top of our pocket bag. We don't need to worry about sewing that top edge, as that will be caught in the waistline seam allowance. When stitching the pocket bag, make sure not to catch the seam allowance of the actual skirt, as we want to be able to iron everything open and flat. Once the pocket bag is sewn, we can start work on our side seams. Getting as close as we can to the bottom of the pocket, keeping the skirt and pocket seam allowance free, we start to sew down the side seam. Minerva Exclusive Visco Chalet is a super soft, 100% viscose woven fabric with a plain weave and no stretch. It is so soft and silky and has plenty of drape, making this fabric the perfect choice for sewing tops, blouses, skirts, dresses, jumpsuits, summer trousers, shorts and more. This is a lightweight to medium fabric that can be a little delicate, but can't we all? We recommend sewing this fabric with a new extra sharp needle for the best result. Why not have a look at some of the other viscose available on Minerva, there is something for everyone. Want a novelty colourful print that would look amazing in a shirt? Have a look at Minerva exclusive band camp fabric. Are you looking for a little deadly drama that would make a killer jumpsuit? Try Minerva exclusive coiled kingdom fabric. Maybe you're not the venomous kind and are more a bit more spring floral. Why not have a look at Minerva Exclusive Rose Relations fabric? To keep our pockets in place while we bring our dress together, run a quick base stitch along the top of the skirt with the pockets facing towards the centre front. Now our skirt is all in one piece, with some rather handy pockets, we can bring our two pieces together. We line up all our seams and edges and pin thoroughly in place. Once that waist seam is sewn and pressed upwards, we have a whole dress. Although it's still a little too hospital gown for my liking, so I think it's best we put in the back zip and seam. First things first, we match up our bias binding right at the top, and we mark on the dress how far down the zip goes. Then from the neckline to our zip mark, we are going to use a super wide basting stitch. Then we back stitch and carry on with our normal stitch length once we have reached our mark. We then iron that seam open and get ready to put in our zip. Placing the right side of the zip to the wrong side of the fabric, we keep that centre back seam lined up to the zip teeth. I am going to baste that in, as I don't like the look of a wiggly zip. We then top stitch both sides and bottom of the zip into place. This dress would also work really well with an invisible zip. I think as well it would be quite easy to line, although I think it would be better to flat line the individual pieces rather than to flip the lining right sides out because of the keyhole back. What do you folks think? To line or not to line? We now very gently unpick that loose stitching that was keeping the back seam closed to reveal our zip. And while we have the unpicker handy, we can go ahead and unpick our basting stitches. There is a little bit of a gape in my zip. I'm just going to pop back in and redo that section so it covers the zip tape a bit better. I can feel Patrick Grant from the Great British Sewing Bee saying it's good from afar but it's far from good and I just can't stand it. Now we just have to hem our skirt and we are done. 
such a fabulous dress and I am so proud of it. The fabric really lends itself to the dress. The flow of the skirt makes such a fantastic look. I love a dress that makes me feel like I want to dance and this definitely does that. I love all the details on this dress that make something really special. I'm a huge fan of a poofy sleeve, so this is basically my dream dress. The keyhole back is my new favourite thing. The fabric is absolutely stunning, the colours are so tropical and warm and the vibrant colours just shine in the sun. Here at Minerva, we love to hear your views. What would you like to make with this Minerva exclusive fabric? What fabric would you use for this Vogue pattern? Any questions, comment below and we'd be happy to answer them. And don't forget, Minerva Craft Club members get a 10% discount for 12 months when they sign up. And creating a free account, you'll get a welcome present of a discount coupon. So join us with our lovely community of makers, follow, comment and like and we'll see you next time.